the righteousness of God. How about that? Whew. And then number four, also at the cross, Jesus shed his blood to cleanse us from our sins. Hebrews 9.22, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sin. And number five, he canceled the Old Testament requirements of the law. Colossians 2.14, he canceled the record of charges against us. Wow! And took it away by nailing it to the cross. What more can you ask? <laughs> Number six, he by doing that, he disarmed the principalities and powers, Colossians 2.15. He disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. And what is that victory? Three days later, after he was buried, he resurrected from the dead. He conquered death and hell for us, and all that happened at the cross. Is that still foolishness? And Christ did it for us because He loved us. That's why it is the power of God to those who believe. Do you believe? Amen. Amen. Do you believe? Amen. I'm not talking about do you believe only in your head. Do you believe that He paid your sin? Everything. Yeah. Yeah. He took all your punishment for you because that's how much He loved us. And because of that, you can be qualified to go to heaven if you do what he asks us to do. Because he did that, and also at the cross, he wrote the New Testament or the New Covenant in his blood. Matthew 26, 27. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Covenant. I was wondering, maybe somebody said, you know, that is why some Bible translations, the words of Christ is in red. <laughs> Signifying that he wrote it in his blood, or with his blood. Amen. Which is shed for many, many. I want you to know that. Although he shed it for all, only those who will believe will benefit from it. I hope you are part of the many. Luke 22, 20. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. Because he, left, he did all that at the cross, the message of the cross is the power of God to number one, to save us. It says in, 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 in 1 Corinthians 1, 20, 21, the message or the preaching, according to King James Version, of the cross is foolishness to those who are headed for destruction. The, 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 new, the NLT says, the message of the cross is foolish to those headed for destruction, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. The first time I heard the power of the heard of, about the cross was in 1977 when I was in San Francisco, California. I shared a little bit of my testimony last night, but I'm going to just say, share it briefly because I, I tried to search for what would fill the vacuum in my in my heart. I was I grew up in a religious home. Um, I was a cursilista. My friend is forced me to the Cursillo because he said, baby, it will change me because kawawa naman si Rose. <laughs> and I did. I wanted to change. I had a religious high and for a while I was okay. But religion did not have the power to change me. Mm -hmm. And after my Cursillo, that's when we got my, my marriage broke. Mm -hmm. And so I said, my religion doesn't have the answer. Maybe I'll find the answer in Eastern religion because during the time, you know, the Eastern religion is coming in. Mm -hmm. And the, you do this, you're going to have peace, you're going to have this and this and that, you're going to be changed, you're going to be a better person. So I started doing that when Marshall was declared, I went to America, I met a religious group called Fellowship of Friends, and in this group we read and we studied and practiced yoga, transcendental meditation, Zen Buddhism, the way of the monk, the fourth way, the way of the fake here, and many other religions that you've never heard. And you'll be surprised what is out there. Three years, I was still the same. Worse, as a matter of fact. Alcohol was not enough. Drugs. Drugs. 
drugs brought me to the point of I wanting to end my life, but I was afraid of death because I said, what is the truth? Three theories of reincarnation. <laughs> and I was afraid to die. And it was during the time that I met a musician, a singer. I was looking for a band to go to Las Vegas. He wasn't interested there, but he cared for me and told me what I needed to hear. Sharing Christ to me. Good works, it will not save you. Your religiosity, it will not save you. You've got to be born again. What is the meaning of born again? Well, because we are dead in sin. Our spirit died when Adam disobeyed God. Amen. The Lord said, the moment you eat of this fruit, you're going to die. Okay? Eve did not really believe. Baby is what? I mean... <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rosemary is looking at me. <laughs> I, I, some, somebody told somebody. I, I, I heard the lady sometime ago said, "You know, when I get to heaven, I have a bone to pick with, with Eve." <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> because if you didn't do that, I wouldn't have so much pain when I give birth. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam, the sin of Adam is. Passivity, and that is the, the, the that is that is the, the the nature of guys. We are passive, right? But anyway, the Lord said you're gonna die, and he he disobeyed. The wages of sin is that he died, and because of one man's sin, death came to all men, and because all have sinned, we are sinners. And because of that, the Spirit of God is dead. He left us. That is only a separation from one mother to another. When my soul separates from my body, my body dies. But the soul continues to exist, but the, the death of the soul is forever separated from God. So that spirit has to be born again. Religion will not do it, good works will not do it. The only thing that will do, he said, is because that's the reason why Christ died. Because he paid the price. You suppose that he died in your stead. He rose again from the dead to make to prove to you that he is God. And all you have to do is believe that. <laughs> Quit trying to earn your way to heaven, but just put your trust in Christ. Amen. Believe that. And so one day, I claim the promise of Christ in Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. And you know what? Before that, I was... Uh, my friend um, introduced me to Henry Krauts. We bought some records, not, not, not personally because I'm preparing for a concert. And I said, I like this guy. It sounds like Elvis Presley, his songs, because it's really grass, uh, grassroots uh, gospel. One day I was having my wine and my marijuana alone in my, my living room. And I was trying to, to choose at least a couple of gospel songs to my coming concert. And all of a sudden, one song sobered me up. Because it says, you may have success in worldwide fame. The world may be impressed by your great name. You may be a millionaire, but the Father made it so. And here's one thing he wants the world to know. You ain't living until you have the Savior. Until you have a personal with the Savior. And I started talking to the record player. I started talking to him. What do you mean personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is so far. I grew up in a religion that you have to have the right mediator to, to even him, to hear your prayer, right? Right. If you have an impossible situation, you go to St. Jude. <laughs> because the faith is the impossible. <laughs> if you want to have a good voyage, go to Antipolo. Before it was only St. Christopher, but he was demoted. It's now the lady of good voyage. <laughs> <laughs> if you have been married for so long and you haven't had children, go to Obando. Santa Clara. Because she is the goddess of fertility. What do you mean a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? You know what? That was my personal experience. The Lord led me right there. I found myself reaching for my friend's Bible that my friend gave me. I opened it. It opened randomly at Mark chapter 8. When I looked down, my eyes fell in verse 34. 
the question, how can I have a personal experience with Christ? Well, Christ said, after he sat down with his disciples, he said, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life will lose it, but whoever will lose his life for my sake in the gospel, the same will save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world, but lose his own? So remember, I want to go to Vegas. I want to have no pain. Or what shall a man give in exchange for, you, for his soul? How important is your soul for you? For whoever is going to be ashamed of me and my words in the sinful and adulterous generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his, the glory of his Father. Amen. 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 The person that came out of my mouth, Lord, I'm not going to be ashamed of you. I don't want you to be ashamed of me. Right there and then I decided to put six gospel songs in my concert. And every, when I started singing the number six, first five songs, Elvis, oh, they were so happy. 